Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. Well, I know the topic of this video is a bit um, controversial and sensitive, so um, if you're a raw foodist and you want to attack me, please don't just jump down to the comments, listen to what I'm saying because I'm not attacking any diet or any person for that matter. I'm just sharing my personal experience. And hopefully you know I was 100% fully raw for about a year. And I start off with that high fat style, you know, with nuts and oils, no good, no energy to go to the gym and run or play basketball. Unfortunately, I found out about high carb, low fat, 80, 10, 10 style, a huge giant improvement. I felt a lot better. I didn't have those losses of energy that I had on the high fat style. Um, however, as much as I was enjoying it, it introduced a couple new problems big ones, ones that maybe try to figure out a way out of it, a way to tweak the diet to make it even work better for me. Again, I'm talking about my experience here. I'm a big guy and I'm almost six foot five. That's like pro basketball, tennis player size, physique. Your mileage may vary, especially if you're a lot shorter than I am, a lot smaller. But anyway, I found that I had trouble with feeling full, even though I'd eat tons of high calorically dense foods. 45 minutes after a meal, I'm hungry again. It's like, God, can I ever get full on this diet? It's just a pain in the butt to always feel hungry. Again, if that doesn't happen to you, awesome. And secondly, I was getting a little too thin. Yeah, sure, it's good to lose a few pounds if you're a little overweight, but I got to a point where I was looking a little too skeletal, a little too bony for what my personal aesthetic preferences were. I've read and seen many people argue that there's this perfect ideal human diet that goes back hundreds of thousands if not millions of years to our ancient human ancestors. A diet that they were eating and that we are perfectly adapted supposedly to be eating and we should still be eating it but we're not because the human diet has kind of gone astray. However, I haven't really found any super solid um, scientific footing for that. In fact, I'll show you um, some clips here from a Harvard anthropologist, Richard Rangham, and he seems to be arguing that a Rato 4 style diet is actually the diet that we've been designed for over the long haul. In fact, check out this clip I'm about to show you. It even explains why I was getting a little bit thin on a fully raw diet. It is very difficult to find evidence of people being able to thrive on raw food. Now this might surprise you because some of you might be raw foodists and some of you might know raw foodists. But look at uh, the data here. On the right hand side, what you see is uh, data for uh, raw foodists, um, with uh, the best data being these ones, uh, a study of 572 German raw foodists. And as they increase their intake of raw food, so their body mass index, shown on this axis, declines. And uh, all of the raw foodists have got a low body mass index compared to those eating their food cooked. So in case you didn't catch that, the thing to take away from, from that graph is on the far right there, you see, the closer your diet gets to 100% raw food, the more your body mass index drops down even lower and lower. Well, is that really a problem? What's wrong with just being kind of super skinny? Uh, every animal that we know of, other than humans, eats their food raw and they produce babies. What about humans? Here are the data from that German study. What we see is that as the amount of uh, food eaten raw increases up to 100%, 50% of women by that point are amenorrheic. Their menstrual cycles have closed down altogether. And this appears to be because they are short of energy. And remember, this study, as the author talks about, was on people in the modern industrialized age. They had full access to supermarkets and Vitamixes and so on. Remember, they're using domesticated food, which is much less fiber, um, much less uh, toxins, much higher levels of digestible carbohydrates than uh, the wild foods. They're eating from the, the global food resource. So there's never a point at which there is any shortage of food supplies for them. They can eat from the tropics if the temperate regions are not doing well. And yet the average woman cannot have a baby. So that got me super interested. So I went and checked out his book at the library and it says up here at the top, cooking increases the amount of energy our bodies obtain from food, which makes sense to me. That's why I feel better having, you know, a combination of cooked and raw food. The extra energy gave the first cooks biological advantages. They survived and reproduced 
better than before, which we saw. You know, fully raw eaters don't reproduce as well. Their genes therefore spread. Their bodies responded by biologically adapting to cooked food. Well, some may say, well, you know, cooking still is a recent adaptation. We should be eating fully raw because that's our natural diet. Well, it says here that the fossil evidence indicates that this adaptation um, didn't just happen just tens of thousands of years ago or even a few hundred thousand years ago. It goes right back to when Homo erectus first appeared and that was well over two million years ago. And therefore that our species is different from every other because we are adapted to eating cooked food. What about a Rato four style diet? It is certainly the case and it's been known for uh, something like 150 years, that if you survey all of the peoples in the world, you find that the evening meal is a routine cooked thing. There are some foods that are eaten raw, and, and very often what these are are foods that are eaten while hunters and gatherers are out looking for food. And in some cases, it's just difficult to whip up a fire. But when they get back home, they really want to have their food cooked. Yeah, that's how I ate too. I ate raw pretty much all morning and early afternoon and at night time I sure love to get me some nice steamed or boiled legumes or potatoes or plantains or what have you. Uh, I know there's a lot of um, raw food evangelists that talk about how great they feel, how their life's so much better right now. Well, I kind of feel embarrassed to like say I'm kind of a raw till four style evangelist. Now I feel really, really good now, guys. Don't hate me. It's my honest, sincere um, experience that I'm sharing with you guys here. I no longer have that feeling of being hungry all the time. I'm more satiated all the time. I have energy. I have a better physique now. I'll put some before and afters here. When I was fully raw and how I looked um, a few months ago on my birthday, I think my physique looks a lot better. So I can't say enough about how this diet is working well for, for me. And again, it's all subjective. If it's not working for you and you find that fully raw is you know, your thing, I'm not telling you to stop. But if you're having some issues on it, you might want to think about what I'm saying here because it certainly has helped me and Angie's digging it too. I think I can speak for her. So um, post your questions and comments down below. Try to be civil and rational here and not attacking because I'm definitely not attacking anyone here. I'm just sharing what I've learned. And in fact, if you want to read Richard's book, Catching Fire, it's a fascinating fascinating read too. I highly suggest you check it out. I got it at our library. Um, like this video if you got something out of it. And um, if you're new to our channel, subscribe to hear more from us here at Happy Healthy Vegan. So until next time guys, keep it carb baby. Keep it carb with raw and cooked. Sweet potatoes are eaten raw and whole, these are eaten raw and pounded, these are eaten cooked and whole, and these are eaten cooked and pounded. And you see the difference. When they're cooked, then they maintain body weight. When they're raw, they don't. Cooked starch gave these mice more energy than when it was eaten raw.